Hey, what's going on? Hopefully everybody's having a great, great day, great, great week. Um, yeah, uh, well, my, my slides are a little off. Uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll roll through it. So, uh, welcome. I, I really want to say thank you for joining. Uh, this is going to be a great series. So if, if you didn't see by the title, uh, this whole series, I'm, this is going to be a four part series where I'm going to go over getting yourself out of debt. Uh, with this, it doesn't matter. What I really want to be particular on is it doesn't matter where you are in your journey. At some point, um, this this information is going to be applicable to you. So we're going to start this journey to get out of debt together. I'm going to go through his four parts. Um, and it's going to walk you through all the steps that you need to accomplish to get you out of debt. I mean, you will be out of debt if you follow these steps. I promise you, if you'll take this four week journey, apply this to your life, you will be out of debt. It's no longer a matter of if you will ever be debt free, but a matter of when you will be debt free. And the sooner that you start this, the sooner you will be out of debt. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So, um, we're going to cover all the critical steps. There's nothing we're going to miss. We're going to go through. I'm going to show you some different tools that you can use. I'm going to show you uh, some different strategies. I'm going to go over all the information you need. Uh, and trust me, you're going to have the if you'll come into this with the right attitude, we will get you there. I promise you. Uh, so I want to be the first to tell you that uh, getting out of debt is not going to be easy. All right. It's not going to be easy by you listening to this episode already. You're already taking the first steps to accomplish this huge monumental task. Okay. Uh, the main topic here is that you, your mindset about debt, uh, and specifically your debt, it, it, it has to be shifted. And that's the reason why I wanted to make sure that we started with the mind before we go into the pocketbook. Okay. So, I've done a previous episode on the psychology of money, uh, but this time I want to focus solely on the mind and how changing it is going to get you out of debt. It's, 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 I mean, I, I don't know the statistics on it. I'm totally making this up, but I would have to have to argue that m literally 90% of being in debt is mental. Uh, there's very, very little, and I mean very little that has to do with actual money problems, right? It's almost all mental. And hopefully at the end of this series right now, you're probably like, no, dude, you're lying. Like this, I don't make enough. I don't, I don't have enough money. Like I don't, I don't, you don't get it. No, I, I got it. I, I just, I'm looking at it from a, a different perspective and, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to look through that same lens at the end of this. Okay. So the biggest reason that people stay in debt is because they have this feeling of defeat that they're already in defeat. You'll hear them say things like, I'll never get out of debt. Um, and, and this statement is, is, is this like mental confirmation that, that they have. They've already accepted debt. Uh, they're always going to be in debt. And this is a tragedy. Um, and, it, you know, it's tragedy waiting to happen, right? Because it's the, the reason is simple. The more they feel like this, the more debt they'll be t they'll take on because I mean let's be honest uh, they're already in debt what's a little more debt gonna hurt right I mean it's it's just, it's this never ending cycle, um, and that's that's until the day runs that, that are you know to the fact that you know it comes that well I finally have enough debt that I don't want to do you know I don't want any more debt they'll all of a sudden change their mindset. They'll all of a sudden change how they feel about debt. Um, and, and they, they'll, they'll realize it's not the life they want, or they, they probably are, are hopefully watching this episode and they realize like, like, wow, like I can get out of debt. Like it's a real thing. Like it's, it's actually possible. Uh, and I tell you, it is, it's a hundred percent possible. Uh, the other, the other law that, and, and okay. And I'm going to be transparent because this one drives me crazy. So the first one, the first biggest thing that people say is I'll never get out of debt. The second thing, and this one, absolutely. I think I sort of hinted at it at the beginning of this episode, but, uh, the second one is I don't make enough money. So before you turn this off, let me explain myself. <laughs> but, um, it, that one drives me nuts. Like it drives me nuts that I don't make enough money. Right. And, that's that's and here's the reason why let me just let me give you the reason why there's 24 hours in a day there's 168 hours in a week if you sleep eight hours a night that leaves you you with 112 hours 
of time to do things. Okay. Let's, let's be clear. 112 hours to do things. The average person, if you work this normal nine to five, whatever type of job, you work 40 hours a week. Okay. 40 hours. So that leaves you with 72 hours. That's your 72 hours. Like you, like everybody that's watching this, listen to this, you have 72 hours. If you fall into that normal, that normal life where you have eight hours of sleep a night, 40 hours of work week. If those two things apply to you, if you get five hours of sleep, you have more than 72 hours, right? But you have 72 hours. And let's say you spend one third, one third of that time at a part-time job, making seven to fifteen dollars an hour, right? That's going to give you a gross annual income, additional income, of your, you know, on top of your primary job of about eleven thousand dollars a year, right? So, and you still have two thirds of your seventy-two hours to spend on those other things you want to do: your friends, your family, your hobbies. Like, you you can hopefully hopefully now you're seeing that that. I don't make enough money is not a good reason to be in debt, right? Like you've got to go out and you've got to do something to get yourself out of debt. It's not this thing that's just going to happen, right? But hopefully you can now see why being debt, being in debt is a choice because it it is because if you have your mindset, mindset's everything. If you have the right mindset, you will find a way to get to living debt free. So let's get to it because this is, this is the big stuff. But before I jump in, I want I wanted to give an example of the reason uh, this is such a powerful part of the process. This whole mindset thing, and getting you out of debt, is such a most powerful uh, part of this. Is that there are a lot of lessons that are learned while you're going through the process of getting out of debt. Okay, there are a lot of lessons learned. So first, the first lesson that you learn is you realize how much pain and misery comes with debt. This leads you to never ever ever wanting to be in this situation again you can see uh if you're watching the the video uh the live stream uh you can see that the the pounding of the face against the money just like the calculator like like i'm like hold up this person's in debt look at all this money they have no i'm just kidding um but seriously it's it's a it's a it's a stressful thing right you never want to be back in that situation. Like you want to get yourself out of debt and then never be back in debt. Like that's, that's this whole thing, right? So, um, you, you've got that, like, that's a lesson that you'll learn while you're in debt and while you're going through the journey of getting out of debt. Second, you have to realize that you would rather not live with this like instant gratification of needing it now mentality, right? Like that's a, that's a huge problem with what we currently go through, um, is that things are so accessible. Like you can easily just swipe a credit card and boom, I've got what I wanted. Right. And and I didn't exchange anything. Right. So that, that's, that's a big piece. And, and, and because of the, 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 I want it now. Like I'm, I'm going to go get it now mentality. There's pain that comes with doing that. Okay. And the pain is that debt, right? And you've got to learn how to, how to fight that urge to, to want it now and to fulfill that. I want it now. Um, you've got to learn how to deal with that. Otherwise it's going to plague you the rest of your life. So third, the last thing is you learn a lot about money management during your get out of debt journey, right? And there's IE those new ways to make money with those 72 hours that you have. Right. Um, and you've got, you know, that, that's just one way, but you, when you're walking down a good get out of debt roadmap, you're, you're going to f- sort of figure out sort of how money works in a way. Uh, and that's very important. So uh, these are important parts of it, and I've had conversations with others about things like bankruptcy and student loan forgiveness and all these, and what I can sum up, if you ask me about bankruptcy or you ask me about student loan forgiveness or anything else, is I can I can pretty much sum it up in one sentence. These are terrible for the person in the long run. Beneficial in the short term, terrible for the person in the long run. Uh, so, th- Because think about it. They made a financial financially bad decision, right? Whether it's to get those this large amount of student loan or to get overwhelmed in debt, they had to file bankruptcy. Um, 
they they made that decision and by allowing them to do a bankruptcy claim or, or allow them to have their student loans forgiven, uh, you're sort of letting them off the hook for that bad decision. It's kind of like a kid being told, don't do this. Don't, you know, don't put your hand in the cookie jar. That's just a, an old school example, I guess. But uh, you told them not to do something again or something's going to happen. If you put your hand in the cookie jar, you're going to get a whipping. If you do put your hand in a cookie jar, uh, you're not going to get that toy that you wanted I, I don't know any kind of repercussion and then they do it again but nothing happens or the punishment's not as severe as, as they were told so in this financial example they got these student loans and they said you're going to have to pay these off you're going to have to pay these off at a certain time and then all of a sudden they're forgiven so it's like the punishment which was pay them off was was sort of done away with so what makes them like, like, like what using the kid example, what does the kid learn if there is no punishment or there's very little punishment that goes with their action? Well, the kid learns that they won't ever have to feel the turmoil, the actual turmoil that comes with that decision that they made. And they'll most likely do it again. Not saying they will most likely do it again. If they, ne- if you never feel the financial burden or that turmoil that comes with that financial decision you made, there's a good chance that you're going to do it again. So that's the same as all these other scapegoats, these forgivenesses, these bankruptcies. You miss all these great lessons along the way on money when someone forgives you for your bad mistake. Okay. And there's, like I said, there's a good chance that uh, new, newly forgiven debt will be replaced with this other debt in the short term future. Okay. So the first thing that I want to attack is, is why like with, with mindset, the biggest thing is when people are in debt is they feel like they are defeated. Like they, like they already are, have lost this battle to debt. Okay. And that's the part that I really want to focus on because if you're living in a defeated mind, um, you're, you're, you're setting your, your mind's not in the right place to ever push you to where you need to be. So when people are in debt, the brain actually becomes the most powerful tool to have, not the job, not the money, not the income, not in, your brain is what's going to power you through your debt journey. It's all about your brain. So the brain in this situation has the power to keep them down in this defeated mindset, or the brain has the ability to drive them to do some some miraculous things to get out of debt. I mean, there's there's stories out there of people doing some pretty phenomenal things to get themselves out of debt. But that defeated mind is the one place that you cannot stay if you ever want to work yourself out of debt. Uh, the defeated mind will lead you to many more days of stress, agony, all related to your current financial situation. But once you gain the ability to control your mind, control that part of you, you you automatically just switch this thing on and you will operate in this whole accomplished mindset. Like things will just start to happen. Things will just start to work and, and your debt will just start to melt. I mean, it will just start to go away because you're doing all the right things to push that thing out of the way. But it all started with how you thought about it. It all started with how your brain was ticking, how your brain was working. So when we're thinking about this journey of getting out of debt, the mindset is the most important part for you to attack. If you're living every day in debt, you're beating yourself up about it, thinking that this whole thing is just going to happen overnight. And when it doesn't, you're you're like upset or sad or whatever emotion comes with that. This is going to lead you to stay in that mindset. So you have to shift away from that. But if you can just change that one piece your life is going to change. Like your, your debt is going to dissipate. You're going to move forward in life. So it's a very important thing to, to, to adjust is, is your mindset and how you're thinking about your debt situation. So some of the common things that lead to this whole defeated mindset, um, there, there are many reasons that lead to defeated mindset, but there are two common ones that I want to address. And, if we can get control of these two common mindset, uh, defeated mindset uh, um, igniters, then you we're able to start to shift that mind and get it get it pushed in the right direction. It's important to know these and how these are going to affect you because the biggest reason people don't reach their level of success that they want for themselves uh, is, is, you know, or actually... It, the mindset is the reason. And, and that's actually where the name, the financial mirror came from. It's, it's, it's your ability to 
improve your financial well-being um, by looking in the mirror and taking control of yourself, right? That's the whole mirror part is this is if I take control of myself, I can change my financial outcome. So the uh, you know the mind is the most important reason that that people don't reach their level of success uh, financially that they want so what i want is you know is, is the common things that occur that lead you to this like self sabotage um, and that hold you in this defeated mindset i want to go over is two things two common reasons uh, first is this negative inner dialogue you can you hear it called negative self talk um, but it's how you talk to yourself, right? We all talk to ourselves. You know, they always say, oh, don't, you know, it's okay to talk to yourself. Just don't answer yourself. Well, I don't mind answering myself. You know, like I, I have a dialogue inside of my head all the time. Call me crazy, but like I have a dialogue inside of my head and I, and I work through problems inside of my head because, because if there's a problem, you have to be in the mindset that every problem you have a solution. You can create a solution, right? No problems too big for you to accomplish because you can create your own solution. So the negative inner negative inner dialogue is where every problem begins to be another problem that's on top of another problem that's on top of an and you just kill yourself with problems. Um, this negative dialogue is the most harmful way. Uh, to self-sabotage you, but is also the easiest to change. Uh, and I say this is the most harmful for the fact that this conversation is constant. Like you can take yourself down this huge negative journey uh, with no end in sight because you can keep talking to yourself, right? And it happens every, uh, you know, second of the day that you let it. So if, if you change it, you can literally change that whole thing to where you're talking positively to yourself every, every second of every day. Uh, and this is where w- when, when you don't control it, this is where you begin to get a lot of second, second guessing, a lot of, um, a lot of negativity inside your head. And, and, th- and this could be things like, I'm not good enough for this, or why even try? I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to be out of debt. Others are better than me. Others were more well suited, you know, for this life or, you know, they, other people have a better opportunity, you know, all this negative context. I mean, it will actually compound and only bring you down further. So, um, there, there, this, this spiral of negativity, once it gets started, it can be pretty hard to control, but if you control it, you can change your life. And I'm gonna go over ways you can control all that. So the second common thing that leads to a defeated mindset is this self doubt, fear of failure. And these two co go kind of hand in hand. They're not directly the same, but they normally are the reason for the negative inner dialogue. And they're the cause of a lot of your turmoil that you have going on in your life. So let's think about it in terms of debt. Let's think about you in debt right here. If you constantly tell yourself, I will always be in debt, or why would I get another job? I'll still be in debt and I wasted all my time. You have doubted yourself and you fear that you will give up a lot of time because you'll still be in debt. Both of these are actually totally wrong and they're detrimental to your longer term success. Okay, both of them. I'll always be in debt is a lie. And why would I get another job? I'll still be in debt. That's not true. Like you haven't even given a chance. You just fear failure. Right. So, so this brain, your brain has a funny way of working, um, because it ultimately in life, it, it has one job and that's to keep you safe. Thinking how your, your brain is going to react. And that's, and I say that, you know, it has all these jobs like, Oh, what about thinking and learning and all these things? You're right. I got, those are all benefits of the brain, but the brain's main job is to be a central processing unit for your body to keep you safe. I don't care how much you're learning. If you get, if you put your body in a life or death situation, your brain's going to instantly turn away from everything you're learning to go and keep you safe. Like that is its job to keep you safe. So deep down somewhere in your life, you have something that's happened and it makes you think and react the way you do because your brain wants to keep you safe. At some point you worked so hard to achieve something and you came up short and, and ultimately failed, right? Like you failed at that. You came up short, you want, you work so hard and you came up short on it. And that could lead you to a fear of failure for all future events until you control that. Maybe you were told by a teacher or a parent or a coworker or a coach or someone else 
that you're not as good. Like you're not the best player. You're not the best uh, student. You're, you know, you're not the best sibling if it's your parent. I don't know, but you were put down at work or at school or on a, on a sports team or something. And this has now led you to like self doubt. So, causing this is now become this inherent part of your identity and it's causing you to now doubt yourself moving forward and and, you know this could show up years or decades or whatever later right and it's still affecting you today and and if it might have been 20 years ago so this is all real but it's a great part about who you are and the best part is that you, you can change it. Like you have the ability to, to change these things, this self doubt, this fear of failure, this negative self talk, all these things that keep you in this defeated mindset are you can, you have the ability to change. So, so how do you, right? Well, the first thing I want to say is that negative thoughts are going to happen and that's okay. It keeps you grounded in reality. It keeps you knowing that, that not all of your life is perfect. Um, because because it really it isn't your your everything is not going to be perfect and if i was sitting here telling you that everything's going to be perfect i would absolutely a thousand percent be lying to you so the the difference is you have to fill your mind with positive self-talk there's always going to be um a chance that you can ignite positive self-talk into your life. Okay. Every, every single negative situation has a positive to it. So here's some examples. You're waiting in this long line for, let's say you're at the airport and you're waiting in this really long line and you tell yourself waiting in this long line is a waste of time. I can't believe I'm doing this. Or maybe, you know, you, that's the negative, or maybe you change that and you say, wow, look at these 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour of uninterrupted time that I can spend listening to my audio book or podcast. You, you, you see, like just taking that same situation where I'm waiting in line, wasting my time, right? Like quote on air quotes, wasting my time. I've now turned that into positive. Like what can I learn from this podcast, audio book, whatever in these next 20 or 30 minutes uninterrupted? Like nobody's going to bother me. I'm waiting in a line. I'm, I'm just standing there. I'm sitting there, whatever. I'm waiting. This is under our time. I can learn something. I can do something. Or I'll never get this debt paid off. What if you change that and you say, I only have 17 more months of debt payments and I'll never be in debt again. Well, you you see, like I've taken this negative, like, oh, I'm never going to get out of debt. Oh, I'll never get this debt paid off. And I put a time value on it. 17 more months. And every month I, I wake up, I can say, 16 more months, 12 more months, two more months. And, and it's just motivating. It's just positive, right? I'm not looking at it in this huge negative light. I'm looking at it in this positive light of I'm going to be out of debt in this many months. And I don't know what's going to motivate you, but you have to find that positive thing in every single situation to motivate you, to get you to where you want to be. So the next thing that you can do, number two, is stop comparing yourself to others. Okay, with social media, that that can become hard. But in all honesty, this creates this very negative um, self image, and it, it's 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 more negative than you can ever imagine. Like it really is more negative than you can ever imagine. When you think about yourself compared to others, you'll start to say you'll start to see things like, "Oh, I don't have that," or "Oh, I haven't done that," and those things will start to creep into your mind, and this will give you this negative spiral of inner dialogue, like, "Oh, I'll never do that," or "I'll." I'll I'll never be able to do that. Oh, I'll never have that. Like all these things. And when you're getting out of debt, if you're, if you're in a cycle of comparing yourself to others all the time, you're going to be tempted to get and do things so that you can, you can be like someone else, right? Everyone's situation is not the same. And and to be honest with you, however, all these things that they're doing or that they have is probably all show anyways, they're probably in debt just like you. So don't, get caught in that spiral of showboating your life because in all honesty, tomorrow, nobody cared, right? Like, like that's the biggest thing is that I, I'm not going to soapbox of that. I should probably do an episode on it. Actually, I will do an episode on it. That's a great episode, not to showbox your life because nobody really cares. Uh, family and friends enjoy like keeping up with what you're doing, but you post that brand new car you got next week. Nobody's going to remember you got a brand new car. Like, let's be honest. So, uh, the easiest way to stop comparing yourself to others is, um, 
you know, no, no two people are alike, nor should their journey be alike. Uh, there'll be similarities. Yes. But you, you're not walking the same journey as someone else. So you, you're not going to have the same outcome. So don't, the easiest way is just to realize that, that you don't have to have everything that someone else has because you're not in the same life. You're not walking the same journey. You haven't been through the same things. So don't try to act like that your outcome is going to be the exact same because it's not. Uh, the third thing to remember um, when you're when you're thinking about not getting into this defeated mindset is you got to change your opinion and thoughts on failure. And this is a big one. I mean, this is a big one. This is a key component of getting you out of debt because there's going to be many things along the way that's going to present challenges and failures in your journey while you're getting out of debt. Robert Kiyosaki says it's it says this whole thing best. People who avoid failure are also avoiding success. So it's an impactful quote because if you took a part-time job that you don't think you could do because of, you know, various reasons, let's say you, you take it, you don't think you can do it, and then you fail at it. Who cares, right? Who cares? I don't. I don't care. Uh, take that opportunity to go learn something and, and keep taking chances. Eventually, they're going to pay off. People being in this is a this is a thing for me. Um I don't, I don't really get embarrassed. If you know me, uh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not the, really the embarrassed type. Like I, like I can, I can scream in the middle of a public area, whatever. And, and I don't like those, like things don't embarrass me. I don't meet strangers. I don't mind talking to people. I don't mind any like things like that. Don't embarrass me because, because to be all honest, like I live a life that I create. And what I want you to know is that when people are embarrassed because they fail at something, it's is a huge waste of time and energy for for that person that's embarrassed, right? Because it it will normally make it uncomfortable to take chances. Like that's a negative thing. If you're embarrassed because you failed, it's going to make you more uncomfortable to take chances in the future. And I want you to know that the people that ever would say anything about you failing at something are people that don't understand that success requires you to take chances and leaps of faith are 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 not the you know the people that 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 don't look at those leaps of faith as your ability or your attempts to try to push yourself higher and further faster better than all the other people um those are not the people you want to impress anyways I'm, i'm telling you like those people are not your positive inspirational people in your life so don't try to impress them like there's no sense in being embarrassed like don't try to impress those people they're, they're not worth your time of impressing uh, take chances go out take chances it all pays off in the end and finally number four last but not least you have to visualize what success looks like and this is something that you need to do you, you, you don't need to do just once. You need to continue to do this. When you start to feel defeated and you put yourself back in that defeated mindset, you've got to start thinking about what's it going to be like after I get out of debt. And then when you imagine that type of success, it really starts to change how your brain reacts in different situations. Think about different things that may happen along the way and and don't let these things deter you from success. So, so uh, challenge your brain and, and know that you will overcome and be successful at anything you do. And I, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but it works. It's an easy practice. You can do all the time, uh, but you've got to be ready for everything all along the way. Uh, and mentally, that is. You've got to be ready. Think about it and be ready. Um, so before I jump to the conclusion, if you're watching this live, uh, you can see on the screen, and I left this here, the 2% mindset. Uh, hopefully, you've seen it. Uh, if you haven't, this will be this is a great first time to to see this. Uh, for those that are listening to this on a podcast, uh, you can look up the two percent mindset. Uh, but that's where two percent mindset is where you want to be. Two percent mindset is where you want to live your life. Um, I'm going to read off some of the the things that fall into the. I'm going to sort of break this down. You know. Uh, from what I see on the screen. So if you're listening to us on a podcast, you know exactly what we're looking at. But 98% of the population, they enjoy being like everyone else. They enjoy this whole comfort zone. They enjoy playing it safe. They enjoy procrastination. They enjoy settling for less. Like like these are all the, the, the criteria of that 98% of the population falls into. 
these types of things, just getting by, like, like those 98% of the population thinks like that, right? They think like that. So 2% of the population are going to be going for their dreams. They're going to have confidence. They're going to explore new things. They're going to choose happiness. They're going to embrace the unknown, uh, excitement. They like change. They like life without limits abundance you know they act in spite of fear like these are things that two percent of the population are doing and what an amazing thing uh to be able to see that what an amazing thing to be able to live among people that are living in that two percent mindset where they're confident and they're they're going out and above their way what an amazing thing so shift yourself into that two percent mindset as that's where you want to be in the long term so wrap this up i know that this is a lot of material and hopefully you can see how important the mind is when you're thinking about your journey about being debt free the most important thing you can do is to is is plan for is that depending on how much debt you have this journey could take years i mean years And this may be something that you're going to continue to work through. The great part about it is you can do it. All right. It's not something that you will always have, right? You're you're going to get out of debt. You're not just going to carry this thing with you forever. Remember, you're responsible for your, your wins. You're responsible for those victories. And getting out of debt can be your victory. You have to know that that's your choice. Like you have the ability to get out of debt, so go do it. Um, it's going to take loads of work. It's going to take some nights of less sleep. It's going to take some extra hours worked, but all worth it in the end. You've got to do it. I can't stress it enough. You've got to have a great team around you during this process. And this could be your spouse. This could be friends. This could be family. This could be coworkers. But you need people around you that are going to help push you motivate you especially in those times being down what else can also help you as a financial coach and if you need a financial coach to be there to help you stay on track let me know uh, go to the financial mirror.org forward slash contact fill out that contact form and i will be in touch with you we'll start uh, the journey together and get you right on your way I'll be there every step of the way, not only encouraging you, but keeping you in that great mindset and adjusting your plan as situations change. Uh, So if you need that help, that extra assistance with a financial coach, please don't hesitate. Reach out uh, thefinancialmirror.org forward slash contact, and I'll be in touch with you. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Leave a comment at the bottom. It truly helps get this out to more and more people and share it with your friends and family that you know this information could help. Till next week, peace. I'll see you then.